Hey, flashbacks, what's up? It's the Culture Detective here investigating your favorite TV shows. And today I'm going to be doing a TV review of The Bear season one. And I know that TV reviews usually get very low views on this channel, so nobody will probably watch this and it's okay. So, <laughs> so it's been a while again since I've seen a TV show, like a live action TV show with people in it. The last one I saw was The Idol, which sucked. No, actually the last one I saw was Secret Invasion, which was also not very good. So obviously it's been a while since I've seen a live action TV show that's actually good, which prompted me to decide to watch The Bear, which I have heard nothing but praise for. And also another thing is lately I've been watching more animes than TV shows because let's be honest here, the state of anime right now is perhaps even better and even more attractive than live action American TV shows. But still, I since being a showrunner is one of my dreams, I kind of have to be caught up with the landscape of television show running. So uh, there, are you happy now? I watched The Bear. The Bear is a show created by Christopher Storer and it is uh, produced by FX. Season 1 only has 8 episodes and each episode is about 30 minutes or so, so really it's basically 4 hours of television. It's pretty skim and it is essentially about Carmen, played by Jeremy Allen White, trying to run this sandwich restaurant in Chicago and uh, that's pretty much all there is. Life is stressful as a chef. He at the same time is also dealing with uh, the past, with the fact that his brother Michael committed suicide and uh, he actually ran this restaurant because Michael left it behind. And running this restaurant, it's, so it's sort of in a way him dealing with uh, how he feels about his brother's suicide. And, and, and letting go and accepting that and so on and so forth. And yeah, there's nothing inherently fancy or crazy or ambitious about this show. If you think it's a crazy crime thriller, then I'm sorry that it's going to disappoint you. It's kind of a slice of life show and I kind of respect that. In a lot of ways, it's like Mad Men, but instead of being an ad agency in an office in the 60s in New York. It's a sandwich restaurant in Chicago in present day. And we very much need shows like this. You know, we have had enough of the Marvel shows and the Stranger Things and uh, whatever, where a lot of crazy shit happens. We need more grounded, more realistic shows, you know? So it's, it's actually really cool for me to find out that The Bear is actually kind of a slice of life show. It's actually a very refreshing change of pace. And uh, even so, it's not the slow paced show at all. In fact, it's very much the opposite. The show has the energy of a screaming child. It's full of fast edits, crazy camera movements, multiple people shouting their dialogues at the same time. It's kind of like uncut gems, but for four hours straight, it's very, very stressful. Um, and in a lot of ways, uh, while I don't have a lot of experience in the kitchen, doesn't mean I have zero experience. I did a little bit in the kitchen for about three months, just a little bit, kinda. But more, more importantly, I think this show resonated with me because it reminds me a lot of being on set on a film, on a short film. And uh, my experience have not been like nightmarish, but there have definitely been moments where it's really stressful. In the kitchen, people are always holding giant trays of heavy shit and saying, behind, corners, behind. And that, in a lot of ways, reminds me of points, 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 or uh, all quiet on set. Uh, so it, it sort of mirrors the kitchen life. So me watching this makes me go, oh my god, like being in the in the cooking industry, being, being in a kitchen is uh, just as stressful, if not more, than on a film set where everyone's yelling and everyone's shouting all these jargons and slangs, camera moves, glass moves, and then in here it's uh, housekeeping, hands. So it's, it's pretty crazy. This, while I've never worked in a kitchen before, 
this show convinces me that this is how it actually feels like. It's just very high energy, very stressful. Everyone's ordering shit and everything goes in, into a nightmarish mess and everyone's yelling at each other and we just got to keep together. Um, and uh, yeah, in, in a lot of ways, it's, it's kind of a fun watch because of that. But then you also have the contents of every single episode itself where it's almost like Monster of the Week where something bad happens every single episode. The crew teams up, fixes it. There usually is some form of conflict here and there. Uh, they fix it and it sort of goes on and on and on. And in the meantime, we have uh, the main character, Carmen, who sort of deals with his past and uh, his relationship with his dead brother. Uh, the episode one ending where he picks up a knife on the ground and he lo he looks up and he sees a picture of Jesus was straight up triggering. I, I don't know why. It's a very infuriating moment because throughout the entire episode, he's like, where's my knife? Where's my knife? And then he finally finds it. And in, in a situation like that, you, you can feel how angry he must have been. But um, he just looks at a picture of Jesus and you can sort of tell he's too exhausted to scream or throw a fit. Um, but also it's like a moment of reflection like why the fuck did I decide to work at a restaurant and now I'm in this shithole and you can just really feel that silent rage and it's moments like this uh, the usage of editing it's, it's, it's really effective episode 4 is really funny where uh, Carmen and his brother uh, his cousin Richie uh, decide to run a kid's birthday party something really silly happens in that episode that really made me laugh but then we have episode seven which is very much the opposite it is an anxiety fueled nightmare it is a 20 minute long take there are probably some invisible cuts here or there but they're not really easy to spot and i am more convinced that this is actually a 20 minute long take um, and this is essentially, you, you know, you know what happens when TV shows have long takes, you know, it means that everything has gone to shit. And that's basically what happens on episode seven. It is a pure nightmare. Episode seven is also the only episode where there is an opening sequence. And that's something kind of sad, actually. I love opening sequences, but TV shows nowadays care less and less about opening sequences and opening credits um especially modern live action american and european shows just have less and less opening sequences to the point where now only one opening sequence happens in the entire season so that's that um but it's still good it's if I have to choose any episode to put the opening sequence on, it would be episode 7 because it's like the build up to the absolute nightmare that's about to occur. And then episode 8 is sort of the aftermath, but it's also the wholesome heartfelt ending that we very much needed. The ending isn't explosively cathartic or anything like that, but it is a moment of tenderness that that we really needed after all the shouting and yelling and all the screaming and crying in the last few episodes and also Radiohead's a letdown exquisite exquisite song choice I love a good Radiohead needle drop and there's also a seven minute maybe even eight minute long monologue near the beginning of episode eight where uh, Jeremy Allen White it's just one shot one close-up of his face and he just acts the shit out of that scene and it's some of the best performances I've seen in a very long time. And also Ayo Adibari. I just saw her in Bottoms and she's funny as hell. She can pull off a dramatic role just as well as she does in a comedy role. She is absolutely fantastic in a show. And her character reminds me of a, a lot of people who joins uh, a crew and is someone new and suddenly she climbs to the very top and then she gets very stressed out and she becomes a person of a lot of conversations so um her performance is amazing the dialogue is really well written i don't think real people actually talk like that because um it's all slangs and jargons and weird expressions um but i am convinced that's how chefs talk and if a show can convince me that then dialogues must be really well written 
And yeah, there are moments in the show that didn't sit really well with me, like the beginning of episode 8 where we sort of enter this dream sequence where Jeremy Allen White aka Carmen is in this talk show and it's this trippy dream and it tries to be quirky, haha, uh -huh, but it's only for a little bit and it's reasonable. But otherwise, I think the show overall is really solid, it knows what it is and it achieves it. It's not... Uh, a very memorable show or a very impactful show but it is a a good time it is well written it is really really well edited very fast paced and i'm feeling a light to decent eight out of ten so have you listened have you watched the new the bear season one comments below let me know subscribe if you want more and thanks for watching